Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Zero Cut Profiles, the show in which I give everything to you in one take, no cuts, so you can have the exact same experience I do. Today, for the first time ever, we are not going to be having a special opponent in a duel room, because we're not in the NR format today. We are in the Extreme Duel 1 format, the new duel trial on Master Duel that only gives each player 30 seconds. And here I have my janky pick for what might be one of the better decks, mostly because it's very annoying to deal with, with a 30 second time limit. It's a deck full of negates and full of play on your opponent's turn. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Cyframe. Now, Cyframe is not the most interactive deck normally, however, in recent days of me playing it, even on ladder, I've had a ton of fun with it. I don't know why, maybe I've just opened up good hands, but I highly recommend it if you want to build it. So, without further ado, let's get into the card by card and I'll go over what each of the Cyframes are here for. We've got Triple Cyframe Driver. This guy just is pretty much what you have to play for the deck. Three bricks, unfortunately, but it's okay. It comes up in some funny situations as well. Next we have Triple Cyframe Gear Alpha. This is the searcher. It doesn't actually negate anything, but it does put a synchro on board, which we can use the field spell with, and it allows us to grab something like a gamma or a delta. Next, we have one cyframe gear beta. This card's not that good because hopefully we'll have other cyframes already used and on board, but it's nice to have as a one of and as an emergency teleport target without using up our alphas. Next we have Triple Max C, obviously it's Master Duel, we're going to want to play the full-on Max C package. We've got Double Cypher and Gear Gamma, we'd probably play Triple because it's a monster and a gate, but it's semi-limited and this is what differs Master Duel from the TCG, where the TCG only has one Gamma, which makes this a little bit less consistent, but it works here. We've got Double Cypher and Gear Delta, which is a spell negate, and it's just like Gamma in every way except to negate spells instead of monsters. So it's like the second or third best Cyframe. We've got one Cyframe Gear Epsilon for things like Infinite Impermanence, or for something like we're going up against Labyrinths, although we're probably not gonna get much mileage off of just one Trap Negate. Triple Ash Blossom to go with the Triple Max C. Then we've got Triple Planet Pathfinder. This deck doesn't really need its normal summon that often, and we really wanna to get to the Field Spell. This Field Spell turns the entire deck on. Next, we've got Triple Mecha Phantom Beast Tetherwolf. There's a lot of cards that represent a Lambda with a normal summon. Tetherwolf is one of the cheaper ones, especially because you also get a free Link Spider at the start of the game. So you can go Tetherwolf, summon the token, token in the Link Spider, link both of those into a Cyframe Lord Lambda. And that's one of the better ways I found to use your normal summons. Next, we've got Double Cash Tier Fenrir. Again, probably would play more if it was a three. But this card is here because one, it's Fenrir, and two, it's a free special summon if we control no monsters, which in most cases we won't because of the way the Psy Frame Lords and Psy Frame Gears play. And it has one pressured planet rate south with it to be searched with Planet Pathfinder as a backup if we've already got the Psy Frame Circuit. We've got double Nibiru. Technically you could play three, but it doesn't always come up as often that your opponent's gonna be doing a full on combo line throughout this, just in case they decide to Nibiru you, or you decide that you wanna get rid of some problem cards and just out it with a Zeta or something, or an Askan the Bicord Goatee, you can do that. We've got one Foolish Burial Goods, it's limited, but we can combine it with Psy Frame Overload, which is effectively Toy Vendor on a turn that isn't the turn it's sent. And because it's a trap, you can do this on your opponent's turn to search a Psy Frame, which is really nice. We've got Triple Psy Frame Circuit, which this field spell says if a Psy Frame is special summoned to your side of the field, you can immediately synchro summon a monster using only Psy Frames. And this is how you turn on your Cyframes more than once during your opponent's turn. If you go into a Cyframe Lord Zeta or Cyframe Lord Omega that can clear themselves from the field, this is not a once per turn. As well as there's a secondary effect that comes up very rarely. Most of the time it'll come up with something like a Lambda if you're trying to beat over something on your turn. But mainly we're looking at that first effect. And it works out pretty well most of the time. One Pressure Planet rates us for the two Fenrir. What I really like about this ratio, even though it's kind of bricky, is that if you go Pathfinder, search the Ratesos, you can go Ratesos, grab the Fenrir, Fenrir, grab the Fenrir, and now the entire engine's cleared out and you have no more bricks from it. However, if you, you know, draw the field spell and a Fenrir, then that happens, but it's okay. 
Next, we've got Double Emergency Teleport. Now, we're not playing Ghost Ogre, mostly because I don't own one. It might be worth it for you to try it, and then we can experiment with things like Barone Lines, or maybe Planet Pathfinder plus it makes a Zeta or something like that. But I have it here mainly for Synchro Modulation, where you can go summon something like a Beta while you have a level 7 Synchro, and you can go into a level 8 Synchro. Or you can go this into a secondary level 2 one like Delta, Gamma, Epsilon with a 7 and get to a 9. Or Mecha Phantom Beast Tetherwolf explicitly says that it increases by the Mecha Phantom Beast levels. So conveniently by using Tetherwolf as opposed to another cyberspace option, this becomes a level 7 which you can use with Emergency Teleport to go into a level 8 or one level 9 synchro of which I am playing Virtual World Kyuubi Shen Shen. And I'll get to why in a second. Double called by because maxi stuff cross out for the same reason and double cyframe overload. This is a nice little bit of removal using spent cyframes in your hand like driver or something that's not going to be turned on like a beta or an epsilon if you really need to or a secondary alpha. And it allows you to banish face down a card your opponent controls if you banish a cyframe from hand or field. It's really nice. And then it has that toy vendor like effect if it's sent, which is why we're playing Foolish Burial Goods. Now, one of the biggest reasons why I recommend this deck is because the extra deck is super duper flexible. You don't need to be playing the cards that I'm playing other than Cyframe Lord Zeta and Cyframe Lord Omega. These cards make the deck 10 times better because they can clear themselves off, so you don't require Cyframe Lord Lambda to use it if you have one of these other monsters. First off, we have one Black Rose Moonlight Dragon. I've invested a little bit more into this deck, so there's a couple of URs here that normally you don't have to play. Black Rose Moonlight is a bounce, and it has some interruption. And then we have Cyframe Lord Zeta, which is also interruption, and it can clear out monsters and force out certain negates, things like that. And it has a graveyard effect that I have yet to really make use of because Zeta normally sticks around. And then we have an F.A. Dawn Dragster. Now, this card is a Spell Trap Negate. It's decent. It's just another level 7 target. We've also got a Wind Pegasus Adding Nister. This is here both as another option if you really want it. I owned one, so I'm playing it. As well as the Dogmatica matchup. Now, the Dogmatica matchup isn't always perfect. But since you're making use of your extra deck, Wind Pegasus adding this deck can be really nice to have. I'm playing a Stardust Dragon because it's free, as well as just it's okay, I guess. I didn't really know what else to put there, but it seems to work out fine. Then we have Cypher and Lord Omega. This card, during the main phase, Quick Effect can banish this card and a random card from your opponent's hand. So you get to remove resources, remove the monster from your field until your next standby phase, which is perfect. And then you can also target a banished card, return it to the graveyard if this card sticks around from your turn, which is really nice to return a spent driver from an effect or something that you banished for Cyframe Overload. Then you also have, if it's in the graveyard, you can target another graveyard, shuffle it back into the deck and shuffle this card back. So you only need to play one, it's limited anyways, but you only have to have one. And then we have a Borlode Savage Dragon. This card is yet to come up, but theoretically, also I owned one, you can make it after you've lost a Lambda, equip the Lambda, and then you have multiple Omni Negates on separate turns. So it's not awful. Then we have a Draco Berserker of the Tenyi. This card's more battle-based, but it's also got a banishing effect for monsters, and it can be used to inflict some massive damage on following turns. It's pretty nice, honestly. Then we've got a Chaos Ruler, because fun fact, these are all lights. So combining it with something like a dark, there's not many darks in this to summon it back, but mainly you can use this first effect to grab another Psyframe if you happen to reveal it. Next we've got Askan the Bicorned Goaty. It's effectively Zeta at home for level 8s. So if you really need to get rid of something, it works out. Then we have the one virtual QB Shenshin. This choice is for a couple of reasons. The first choice is because any card sent from the field to the graveyard is banished instead. So it's really good. We don't really care about our graveyard all that much, but what's really nice is that this is a really oppressive floodgate that we can use. And I know floodgates, eh, this card's pretty good. And then when your monster declares an attack, you can turn a banished monster to the owner's graveyard. So we can return again a spent driver or something banished for overload, something like that. And finally, 
You can banish two other monsters from your graveyard with different original types and attributes to special summon this card from your graveyard. This deck is not really full of those, but we've got Earth Machines, we've got Wind Machines, we've got Fire Zombies, Earth Insects. We've got things that work alongside the Cyphering Gears, which are all Light Psychics, to take advantage of this effect if we really need to. One Link Spider, because we have to have two non-token monsters for Cyframe Lord Lambda. And finally, triple Cyframe Lord Lambda, because this card makes the deck tick. You probably don't need to play three, but I do it just in case because I'm also very dogmatic and paranoid. <laughs> so, without further ado, I am very excited to be showing off this list. We're going to have to have our time in track, and let's hop in to an Extreme Duel. So this is the first time, I think, ever that I have not had an opponent already ready. We are using the actual ladder system. So I'm very excited to see how this goes. We very well could end up against a self TK, but this is also one of the reasons why I like Cyframe, is because even going second, we have a couple of plays, because the entire deck is just negates. We've got hand traps, hand traps, and more hand traps. So, you know, this is the kind of thing that ends up being the troubling part, is if you actually don't draw any of the Cyframes. Maxi's nice, obviously, called by is nice. Sword Soul, not nice, <laughs> especially without a Gamma. We've got Moye revealing Taya, and we're just going to go ahead and fire off the Maxi. Hopefully we can just get this cleared up, they'll go into a Chi Shao or something. Or they could Ash me, and now we have to go full combo. Luckily we do have the Cash Tira package online with our Pressured Planet Ratzos. Hopefully we can get through this, we may not do so well. I was hoping, you know, I'm playing an actually decent deck, that we can get through this and actually win a game. but. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. It'll be interesting. So they're going to go Synchro the Moye and the Token into Sword Soul Grandmaster Chi Shao. And Chi Shao Effect is going to add or banish a Sword Soul card. I forget what people add. Most of the time I believe they add Long One. And then you can go Moye draw a card. Moye Chain Link 2 is really interesting because then if you draw into the Long One, you can add something else, add or banish something else. As well as Chi Shao is also a monster negate which is really annoying there's the long one they added sword soul sacred summit so this is going to summon and add another token which is really annoying because now we have to deal with more effects more negates things like that but i think we can handle it hopefully at least we can probably bait out something with the planet pathfinder because this also tributes for costs so if they decide if we draw into something like a lambda and they try to negate then we can go Gamma and negate and, well, you know, or they could just crash. <laughs> Time limit win! Okay then! Well, that was already 30 seconds. So, you know, because this is so short, I do want to show off the deck a little bit. We can go into one more duel, hopefully draw a few Cyframe names. And what's really fun about this deck in this festival is that you don't play on your turn. You can devote all your time to battling, making sure you do everything correctly there, and then you play on your opponent's turn, taking advantage of the fact that the timer refreshes for every turn, which is why I think this deck is a little bit better in this format. So as we load in, oh, come on, there we go. Thank you. We're going to be going first, thinking something like the field spell, a couple of, okay then, this is not the best, but we'll figure it out. Maxi. An Epsilon we can banish for Overload, Alpha, Driver. Fortunately, we drew the Driver, but that's okay. We'll just set Overload and pass. So I am a little wary about firing off the Max C. Unfortunately, we didn't get the Field Spell, which makes things a lot worse. That's why we need some sort of way to take advantage of the Cyframes once we've summoned them, because otherwise we can't really clear them out. But we can always go Alpha Search the Field Spell which we might have to do. Apple Magician Girl, okay then. Not what I was expecting. We're also gonna have to deal with this draining our time at least once a second. So here we can target one card on the field. We are going to wait, we're gonna take the damage because I'm not really afraid of an Apple Magician Girl. These are the cases where we draw a little bit too much of the Cyframe. So you want to draw a nice mix of your Cyframe core and non-engine core. We're going to go ahead and use Overload, banishing the Epsilon to banish that back row, just in case it's a trap or something like that. Granted, we could have waited Epsiloned, 
It'll be fine. So Maxi is actually going to be a huge hindrance here. <laughs> you know, I say that and we draw a second one. Ah, oh, well. We'll just set a back C and pass the turn. If it's target for an attack, so we don't actually have to worry about Cyphering Overload bothering the Apple Magician Girl. Hopefully they don't have something like a Chocolate Magician Girl. That would be a little bit troubling. But I think we can deal with it. A Magician Girl deck is not the most unexpected. Magician's Rod. Hmm. We're not going to worry about anything just yet, although they could go into a rank 3, funny enough. Dark Magical Circle. I think we banish that. We can banish the driver. As long as you have two-ish drivers in rotation, you'll be fine. That's why I also normally pick the drivers from deck as well, as opposed to the one in the graveyard. One, because it plays around called by, and two, because it allows us to allows us to get the bricks out of the deck. So if they're all in the graveyard, that's always fine. Battle phase, that's fine. They're just going to destroy the max. See, these are the situations in which we really need some way to get to Lambda or something else. Even a Beta would be nice here, but I'm only playing one. These are the cases when it would be useful, which is like the niche cases. Maybe they'll go into something main phase two, or not. That's fine too. This game's a little bit more interesting. Another alpha. We're drawing all of our duplicates. But there is always the potential we can go do something like this, banishing the alpha. Maybe this is a little preemptive, but I want to get any source of Dark Magician cards out of the way. So like Magician's Rod, and if there's just an Apple Magician Girl, that's fine. So we're a little bit low on card advantage, but that's okay as long as we're just not losing to Apple Magician Girl beatdown. Preferably they will normal summon a monster, and we can take advantage of the Cyphering Gear Alpha in our hand that has been sitting there because we set the max C. Please, come on, normal summon. There we are, there's the Chocolate Magician Girl. There we go, so Cyframe Alpha will special summon it. And we'll special summon the driver in attack position as an attack wall. And then we will search probably the field spell. I never normally grab the field spell because it's so searchable, but I feel like we're in a situation where it might start being necessary. We're out of side frames though, so maybe searching Gamma was a better idea. I'm just thinking if we can have a Chocolate Magician Girl just kind of use up cards, take advantage. Pitching the Dark Magician Girl. Okay, that's fine. That Dark Magic Circle Banish was really good. So battle, they're going to go into the Alpha, I imagine. Or they're not. Okay, then. So then end phase, we're going to go Overload. We can banish the Alpha, banishing the Chocolate Magician Girl. And then that's perfect. So now Alpha is going to resolve. Whoop. There's my computer charge. There we go. Oh, <laughs> we almost lost the game to my computer dying. Call by the grape. These are the situations in which it's a little bit frustrating. We don't have anything really we can do here. This is where searching a gamma or something like that would have been a good idea. So kind of regret clicking circuit, but at the end of the day, I don't think it would have affected the situation too, too much. We're just drawing all of our hand traps that aren't Cyframe traps. So we're a little stuck. Oh boy. Hmm. I imagine there's something. No, they're sending the Dark Magician. Okay. We're going to go Maxi. And then. Hmm. Maxi hopefully will be able to do something here. Magician Soul send to the graveyard. I wish they got to target for this, because then that called by would be much better. If I imagine summoning back the Dark Magician, we're going to take a little bit of damage here. We may not actually win this, but that'll be okay. Nibiru is nice if this was any other deck, but unfortunately, there's a very good chance they just go to battle. If they happen to go into enough for Nibiru, then I will happily take it. They're not activating the Berry Magician Girl effect. This is 4100. Interesting. 
Ow. This is a case where beta might have been a better idea. You have to do a lot of thinking for the side frames. You, it sounds like it's just negate the deck, but it's a little bit more intensive than that. You have to think about when, where to negate, and what you grab off of an alpha, depending on your situation. So like, like I said, si maybe grabbing gamma wouldn't have helped here. That back row is bothering me. There we go. That's what we needed a while ago. Once per turn during either player's turn, your opponent activates a card effect that targets this card. I'm trying to read this card, make sure I know my card. I don't know if there's much we can do here. We can go Tether Wolf. Hopefully they don't have any gate that gets rid of it. So we can do this. And this, I think we're in kind of an impossible situation. Because if we go into Link Spider, if we go into a situation with Lambda, then I don't think that's enough because they're going to go Dark Magician in. And then we're unfortunately going to have to make a Lambda here, trying to focus. Let me go to battle, let me go to battle, let me go to battle. Actually, I don't want to go to battle. Especially someone Dark Magician from your... Oh, jeez Louise. But now Overload is also online. Really, they were breaking on a Dark Magician. What a surprise. Okay, then, we are very, very good. We just did not draw the right combination of monsters, unfortunately. I guess that Epsilon was useful. End phase. I guess having an Overload Banish wouldn't have really saved it here. But if only we could get rid of the Dark Magician, then this would actually be an attack threshold that they couldn't necessarily beat. Battle phase. Dark Magician in. We'll go Overload, We're, we lose, unfortunately. But you can kind of see there's the bad of Cyframes is where you kind of, you just draw wrong. There's, it's very easy to draw wrong. So we'll just use up all our cards, blah, 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 click this. And while the duel's finishing up, thank you everyone very much for watching. I highly recommend this deck. I know this didn't show it off very well, but it was very fun play during this festival and I will be playing this on ladder so have a good day everyone thank you for watching hopefully the start magician attack finishes and peace